Uh, still, the breakfast welcome and thanks for staying with us. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, recommends 26% of annual budget of developing nations to a public education or to our educational sector. Now, Nigeria's allocation to the sector is still less than 10%. President Mohamed Buhari had made promises at recent international forum that allocation to education would be increased by at least 50% in the next few years and by 100% by 2025. Allocation to the sector in the 2022 budget estimate still fell short of stakeholders' expectation as it was pegged at 1.29 trillion naira or 7.9% that was allocated to the education sector out of the 16.39 trillion appropriation bill presented to the National Assembly. Now, the 555.3 trillion naira budgeted by the federal government in the last six years, you only have uh, 33.5 trillion naira as allocated to the educational sector, and this represents less than 10%. In 2016, of the 6.06 trillion naira total budget, 369.6 billion naira, or you like to say 6.7%, was allocated to public education in the country. Now, in 2017, 550 billion naira, or 7.38%, was allocated to education out of the 7.29 trillion budget we also have in 2018. 605.8 billion naira or 7.04% was given to education out of the 9.2 trillion that was in the budget. Moving to 2019, 620 billion or 7.05% was allocated to education out of 8.92 trillion naira, while in 2020, 671.07 billion naira, or 6.7%, was given to education out of 10.33 trillion naira. And in 2021, 742.5 billion, or 5.6%, was allocated to education out of the budget proposal of 13.6 trillion naira. We had already talked about 2022. Let's have a bit of some comparison to what is obtainable in some parts of Africa. For instance, in Ghana, you have Ghana allocating 23.81% of its national budget to education in 2015 and 22.09% in 2016, 20.1% in 2017, 18.6% in 2018. Although this does not meet the UNESCO's recommended uh, 26%, is it better than less than 10% that we have in Nigeria? While in South Africa, there's been continuous increase allocation to the sector from the R246 billion to 16.7% in 2018. And in 2019, you could say that you had 307 billion ran uh, in 2020 that was also projected till it hits uh, 416 rand billion by 2023 and 2024. We have uh, a guest joining the conversation this morning. It's a good thing that he's of the educational background. We're talking about Dr. Peter Ogundo. Uh, he's an educational researcher. Thank you, Dr. Peter, for joining us. It's my pleasure to join you. Good morning. So um, my question here is if education is a very important part of our lives and you have different countries, you know, you have nations uh, devoting a huge part of their budget to the educational sector. What then is the problem? Why haven't we have such interests reflected in our budget? in Nigeria? Well, uh, the, open, the open secret there is that the people who run the affairs of your country, Nigeria, are people who are not training their own children here. 
And so they do not wear the shoe and they therefore do not know where it pinches. So uh, since they are training all their children abroad, uh, they do not care about how well we run the education system. And so um, they prefer to put their money into things that are of, of importance to them. For example, security, they want to stay alive and keep wasting the money that um, is available to uh, our national coffers. Uh, that, having said that, we also have to recognize that most of these people are really illiterate. Illiterate not in terms of not being able to read and write, but illiterate in terms of not appreciating and understanding the indispensable place of education in uh, fast track development for a very poor country like Nigeria. And so, so long as you continue to have uh, these kinds of politicians who run the affairs of your country and then supported by their cronies who populate the ministries of education without having a good background in education principles, then you continue to um, find yourself in a situation where you are not going to have adequate funding and the right uh, human capacity to run the system. Unfortunately, um, that is where we are. And I think that um, we need to make um, an urgent effort to get out of this um, um, very unfortunate um, place. So one of the things that you mentioned is that, uh, well, they are not in the know. And so for them, what's important is security. And if security is important, don't we understand uh, why we're having the insecurity or the security situation that we have, the challenges that we're faced with as a country at the time? Let's look at, you know, the out of school children. There are reports that about 18.5 million children are out of school. And we understand how this, you know, is a major threat to, you know, education. So why, how do you now say you, you're solving the issue of, um, you know, security and not understanding that if you take care of education, then security can also be handled? Yeah, that's, that's, that, that's the point I'm making. Uh, illiterates are running the affairs of your country. They, are, they don't have brains that have been developed to understand how these things are interconnected. That if you uh, fund education adequately, then uh, you, and, and of course, it's not just about funding. You also need to have the right people in the right places so that we can provide the right education. At the moment, we are not providing the right education. So our people are just learn the what of things and not the why of things. And until we're, we're able to move our children to the why of things, they won't uh, be able to think properly. And so um, when education is not properly provided, uh, you discover that people go through the schooling system without getting educated. And and they, therefore, lack the capacity to provide and save jobs. And even when you create the jobs and give them to do for you, they haven't got the knowledge and the skills to be able to do your jobs well. And so that's where we are. Uh, if you fix education, uh, you, you have indirectly fixed security, you have indirectly fixed um, fixed uh, politics, you have indirectly fixed uh, other social problems, as well as you know the economy. But so long as you continue to uh, make education take uh, a backbench, uh, for that long, will you continue to have these other uh, uh, challenges that all of us are running about to try try to fix? So, uh, the point I'm making overall is that uh, we need to get the right people in the right places who can do the thinking. We haven't got um, thinkers in government, and until we are able to uh, get the right people in those in those kinds of climbs and and, and spaces, we'll, we'll continue to have these challenges. Okay, so but let's let's continue to look at this because you you have stakeholders saying that poor funding is responsible for the output that we have now, and over time we've had stories that there are a lot of persons who are out on the streets who are not very employable. Uh, so we have constantly chunked out people who cannot be employed. That would mean that they don't have any value to add. But on the other hand, uh, the, the argument also have been that. We're not moving with the trend. Our curriculum might just be a problem. The kind of curriculum that we have and also our ideology towards education, for instance, we seem to pay attention to conventional uh, institutions rather than, you know, vocational. We know we have a vocational, but the number of vocational institutions that we have uh, and that of the conventional universities, you know, you seem to have one on the other hand. So is the problem really just about poor funding or our curriculum or and our ideology about education is also a problem? All of, all of that, all of that. I, as a matter of fact, I, I, I think that um, uh, the funding matter, it shouldn't actually be our number one problem uh, because we can fix that if we have the right people in the right places. We haven't got the right people in the education spaces making policies and implementing the policies. 
That is the major problem because the politicians take their cronies and give them, you know, very significant uh, positions in ministries of education. And so those people haven't got the brain it takes to devise our proper policies that will guide us even to where the money is. Because we don't really lack money the way we are thinking about it. Because I do not understand why in the year 2021, we continue to believe that the average Nigerian parent will not be willing to pay for his child's education, you know, when the child, that child is in the university. Whereas almost everyone now has, 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 has the children in private schools and they pay, you know, at great inconvenience to keep their children in those places. Why should a child pay 100,000 per, per term? while in, in primary school and get to university and is paying 25,000 Naira per, per term, per semester. It doesn't make sense. So we have to get a model that works. The current model where the government picks up all the bills that run the education system at higher education level is a very wrong model. We have, got, got, we have to get to a point where we agree that Nigeria is a poor country and the government um, will not have control to have the capacity to fix all the problems in education funding wise and then get parents to the table. In all of these conversations about us, I'm not aware that parents are, are, are part of the equation. They are not involved in the conversations that you know, will lead us to back to the classroom. And they are a very important element in, 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 in this system. You know, uh, Unfortunately, they have been uh, 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 marginalized in the, conversation, in the conversations that, that are going on. And until you are able to get them involved, because they will help you to fund the system, you will not be able to find a sustainable you know, solution to the problems bedeviling the, the, the higher education system. Oh, you mentioned uh, the, uh, you talked about, you know, the private institution. So what exactly is the private sector doing? Because we, in Nigeria, uh, if you have the means and you have what it takes, we seem to have a lot of persons tilting towards, you know, the private uh, universities. And so what exactly is the private universities or university or institution doing that, you know, the public sector is not doing and you have this great movement well, uh, the, the, the challenge, as I, I, as I you know, suggested much earlier, um, is that the people running the system, especially as policy formulators and implementers in ministries of education, are people who are either training their children abroad or have them in the private you know, school system. And interestingly, the politicians and their cronies are also the people who own the private, you know, most of the private universities in the country. So as we strike benefits private universities because it makes them more attractive compared to public universities. Because every time you have this kind of strike, they know parents withdraw their children from public universities and move them to private sector, to the private sector. But that is not going to help anyone because even, even the private private universities in Nigeria are not providing the kind of education parents are thinking, you know, is available in those places. Because who are actually the people teaching in, in private universities? They are junk lecturers essentially from uh, the public in, uh, universities, universities like University of George, University of Amadou Bello, Soka, uh, Lagos, Ibad. They are the ones who go to the private, you know, uh, universities to go and teach, and they don't even want to take permanent jobs there because they don't do not want to, you know, be controlled by by the, the missions and the, the private sector people who run those kinds of places because they want the academic freedom, which is very fundamental for, for good quality education to be provided at, at, at that level. So we are just deceiving ourselves. We haven't got we haven't got it right. And the philosophy is not is not right. We don't know what we're doing as a people. We are un unwilling to allow Nigerians who are even happy to serve for free to be able to help us to fix these problems because of our selfish interests which we are trying to protect in high places and so my sister um the, your problem is not about it's not about to end even if we get us to throw this official fire coming from the president back into their classrooms uh, it is not going to provide us a lasting solution and uh, 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 let me reveal this to you by the time the strike is over and children return to the classrooms they will discover that about 50 percent of their professors have left nigeria because that's where we are they, they are tired of the uh, this decrepit system and they are living in droves and so we have shortchanged ourselves and uh, we are going to pay lecturers for about five months you know and that, uh, without having got services from them and that's 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 very poor thinking so every time we have this strike and we let lecturers stay away from their classrooms we are bargaining for you know services not done that we are going to pay for and this is uh, uh, this is what can come only from politicians who haven't got the right brains and who are not who who are not willing to let people who not you know teach them what to do
No. Well, would you say that at this point now we need to get the right brains? How, where do we get the right brains from, <laughs> you know, in this space that we're We're in. all over the place. I, 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 I trained in education. I studied up to PhD in England and uh, in several other countries around the world. I was in Oxford. I was in Cambridge. I was in Norway. I was in Sweden. I was in Austria. You know, they are at their Center for Innovation and Education. And there are several other Nigerians who have my kind of background. And we are willing to come home and stay here for a while to help to fix this place. But nobody is willing to give us the space to help Nigeria to move forward. And so, so long as you continue to, you know, ignore the people who know and you use illiterates to run the Nigerian education system, for that long will you continue to, to live with the kind of problems that we are discussing this morning. So that's the thing. We have got the brains in, in diverse, you know, places around the world, um, in the UK, in America, in Canada. The reason why we are not happy to come is because the politicians will not give you the freedom and liberty to use what you have acquired from uh, Senate climbs to help to develop the Nigeria's, you know, higher education system. Uh, mm -hmm. But if we repent suddenly and give Nigerians the, the, the opportunity, who have the idea, the opportunity to run the system, you discover that these problems will disappear overnight. So we, we therefore have no right to blame those people who are, uh, you know, moving their children, including those who are calling the shorts. I mean, the elites now uh, moving the children outside of the country. Uh, you know, because you mentioned that these are Senate climbs and it feels like it's better there, you know, to acquire an education rather than to be in this system. So we shouldn't blame them because uh, the system is nothing to write home about. But quickly before you weigh in on that, I'd like to show your thoughts on this as well. Do you think that this is a very logic thing to do? Prior to now, this is 2022, in 2021, uh, you had bills at different stages at legislative activities at the National Assembly for establishing 235, you know, uh, federal universities, polytechnics and colleges of education and special institution. Now you said poor funding should not be a, an issue, but... In the midst of the fact that we're not even able to fund the ones that we have, do you think that this is a smart move? Do you think that this is the best that we can do as a people? You don't, you don't have to be an educationist like me to understand that our problem is not the need to create more universities. We have enough. We have enough. We have enough universities that will accommodate everyone who, who has the intellectual capacity to benefit from university education. We, know, we don't need new universities to do that. Because in a modern society, actually, you don't have to always gather people in physical spaces to train them. Um, uh, in, in the UK, for example, the open university in the UK, it, 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 you know, trains hundreds of thousands of students and who don't have to gather in, the, in, the, in, in, in physical spaces to learn. Uh, 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 MIT is training hundreds of thousands, millions of people across the world without those people having to travel to America. So why do we keep thinking that we need uh, physical spaces to give people good quality education in the year 2021? This conversation I'm having with you, we are not having it in a physical space. I mean, far away, Kaja, you are in Victoria Island, and people are people are able to um, participate in this in, uh, and enjoy the conversation we're having. So why are the professors not able to work with politicians to recognize that the way forward is not to is not to establish more universities, but rather to um, you know equip the ones that are in place and then use modern technology to 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 to, to take to take us to where, where where we need to be. But I tell you one thing: politicians use the establishment of new universities as as um, as tools in their hands to convince voters to vote for them. You know, election you know is coming is around the corner, and so they are going to make it, it tell, tell for voters that look uh, in the past you know uh, four years that I have been in office as their representative, I was able to get uh, this university and this polytechnic in, into into our community, and so on that ground, vote for me again. So that's the whole that's the whole essence. It's not about giving people access; it's about using something to you know to, to bargain for votes, which is very unfortunate for us. So people here are not the people who run your country are not thinking at all. Country. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Peter Ogudoro, for, for being part of the show. You, you are Nigerian, except you're saying that it's only my country. You're here and we're all in this together. <laughs> That's on a lighter note. <laughs> it, it's, it's your country. Some of us are beginning to dissociate ourselves from what politicians are doing. Really. Oh, well. so sometimes... Uh, we, we speak the way we do, but pardon us and excuse us. Uh, no, no, we, no, that, we, that's we okay. And give us better control of us, we get into it together. Yes, I mean, I wish we could continue this conversation. Uh, I, I really don't know how much of time that we do have uh, waiting to get, you know, that prompted to leave. But let's see if we can have you share your thoughts one minute with the ongoing back and forth with ASU, uh, you know, the NLC and the federal government. NLC saying they are going to embark on a strike 
uh, you know, to it's as a solidarity to the union, ASU, uh, for them to implement the agreement that has entered. And the government is saying that the strike is illegal. On the other hand, the government is saying two weeks has been given for all of these issues to be resolved. They're saying you don't need two weeks, you need two days or three days to resolve the issue. Uh, how, yeah. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, 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 I agree with um, I agree with NLC, I agree with us. They have completed bargaining. Uh, it's just for the president to... The president should, shouldn't actually be talking to us. The president should be talking to the people who report to him. Uh, they should release the funds needed. They should provide the laboratory equipment. They also has, they also, they also members are employees of government. So they have got nothing to do with how you fund the system. Uh, where you work now, is it your responsibility to look for money to make sure that the, that the studio runs? Your business is to come into the studio and make this presentation. You know, it hosts me for us to have a good conversation. So the president shouldn't be talking to us. The president should just direct Ministry of Finance to release the funds needed and then working in collaboration with Central Bank of Nigeria. All the funds are released and then by tomorrow, ASU wouldn't even need to go back to the, to the negotiation table to, to get their members back to the classroom. So I completely agree with that. We don't need, we don't need two weeks. We need only probably to four hours to get their members informed that the government has done the needful and they should return re return to the classrooms. But I must warn that if they return to the classroom in a hurry, the problem will, 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 will come back to us because they haven't found a sustainable model for funding the university system. As I mentioned to you earlier, if you don't get the parents involved and the students who are benefiting from university education, if you don't get them involved in the equation, you are not going to have a sustainable model for funding Nigerian tertiary education sector. And oh. that's that's very critical. For now, government um, you know, officials, um, uh, the politicians and those ministers of information, they don't seem to be looking in that direction. They, everybody seems to be in a hurry to get us back to classrooms. That is not what we should be we should be you know, concerned about. We should be concerned about how to get a sustainable funding model for tertiary right. institutions in our country. Dr. Peter Ogudoro, thank you so much. I would like to speak with you again as regards you know, the educational sector of Nigeria. I appreciate your time. My pleasure. Have a great day. You too. Well, we've been speaking with an educational researcher, uh, Dr. Peter Ogudoro, thank you so much. And like you have had, we hope that the relevant quarters would swing into action. We'll take a break now. We'll look at the role of public figures in nation building.